Until recently, I had bad road rage. It had got to a point where it was really unpleasant, even for me, forget about the passengers. Now, don't get me wrong, I really love driving, but the behavior of others, other drivers was affecting me badly. The road had become a trigger for my misery. One day, I was driving along peacefully when someone else cut me off abruptly. I was inflamed. I overtook from the wrong side, drove parallel to the other driver and showed my middle finger, screaming some words that I can't possibly say here. Then I saw the look on that driver's face. They were terrified. I felt so ashamed. It was an elderly couple, probably in their 80s. It got me thinking, road rage isn't very healthy. It puts me in a bad mood, turns me into an unpleasant idiot, ruins my day and my productivity in whatever I was going to do once I got to wherever I was heading. So I started asking those around me, my friends, family, colleagues about road rage. I realized that most of them had it too. They thought the influx of vehicles, bad etiquette of other drivers, limited infrastructure and disorganized roadworks uh, were causing it. While all these reasons seem plausible, I really wanted to figure out what my cause for road rage really was. So my insight search was deliberate. I planned to understand my situation. I began to observe my driving habits. This meant that I had to stop thinking about other things whenever I was driving. I had to become mindful of my driving and be fully present on the road. How am I reacting or responding to various situations that I encounter on the road? You can say that I was recording and analyzing and trying to figure out what my driving story was. Our feelings, reactions, responses, even dreams, fears and desires, they are all data. I call them soft data because uh, they are buried inside our subjective worlds. The next day, I got to an intersection. There were about seven or eight vehicles before me. I waited happily for the green light, then boom, it turned green, but one of the cars in front maneuvered to switch lanes, succeeded and went through at the last second. But I had to stay for the next green light because of him. Now I could be at a Ferrari with my road rage. It got me thinking, there are all kinds of drivers on the road. Surely I can't expect every one of them to be courteous uh, because even I'm far from it. It didn't make sense this was the cause. While returning home uh, on the evening of the day after, mine was the first car at the traffic lights. The light, was, light turned yellow and I was already on first gear. As soon as the light turned green, I sped through the intersection and after about 150 meters, I looked through the rear view mirror to see how many vehicles had managed to clear that light. At that point, it occurred to me and I started laughing to myself. I had my moment of realization. I had sped through the in intersection to enable as many drivers as possible to also clear the light because I was harboring the flawed belief that if I always drive in a way that helps other drivers, they would somehow return the favor. Ha, huh, what was I thinking? That's such a wrong belief. So when they weren't really returning that favor, it created a tension within me that I would then be taking out on everyone on the road. This was irrational. Two days into understanding my driving situation, I figured out my road rage. When I realized my own stupidity, I couldn't help laughing. Now I could change my wrong beliefs and thereby my silly behavior. I woke up the next day, literally free from road rage because my realization had made fundamental changes in the way I was thinking, feeling and behaving. The pursuit of insight had paid off immediately. Similar to my road rage, we have a lot of hang-ups about insights, that insights are like God working in mysterious ways, striking you like a flash of lightning, that it has to hit you and that you can't really seek one out. These aren't empowering points of view and in this course, we intend to change that. The aim of this course is to debunk some of the limiting beliefs and prepare your mindset and show you some of the steps that you can take to improve your odds of having insight. Because if insights can be an integral part of our everyday lives, our lives will become so much easier, enjoyable and stress-free. We will handle situations better and make better decisions. We can do a lot of things like saving, exercising, eating 
healthy, making our children do their homework, uh, getting our employees to come to work on time, then there are things that we want to stop doing, like wasting time, buying unnecessary things, or even digging your nose. Yes, even that. So we can help you have more insight so you can change as you please. This course will help you have insight about the way you think. Uh, think of this course as if it was a pair of funky shades that makes you curious and fully engaged with the world around you. It, it will help you to understand your own behavior. You will be able to read situations better, be it personal or business, and come up with better solutions. If you want to be a better thinker, this is, this is an ideal course for you. Uh, this course is actually presented in four parts. In part one, we will be talking about a practical way to look at insights. In part two, we will discuss about the kind of mindset and essential skills we need to acquire to become an insight miner. Then we move on to part three, having insight about people, including yourself, not just others. And in the fourth and final part, we will talk about how to put everything we talked about into practice. In the next video, I will be discussing how to think about insights in a way that helps you to have more insight. So if the prospects of having more insight excites you, come on, let's start learning right now. See you in the next video.